Awesome. Sweet stuff, guys. Sweet. So if everyone can just close their eyes to me. I know we just prayed, but I'm going to pray one more time. Jesus, tonight we love you, Lord, and we bless you. God, tonight we honor you, Jesus. You're such an amazing, 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 amazing God. You're such an amazing Father. So if everyone can lift their hands in the air for me, nice and high. And don't you say, Jesus, tonight speak to me. Come on, say, Jesus, tonight speak to me. Change my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. So you guys, so tonight, um, I, I know we're rushing through all the fun stuff where we usually say what's up and hi to all the guests. If you're a guest in this place, what's up? I'm Pastor Josh. We're so glad you're here. But because we're short on time because of the altar call, I'm going to just jump right in to the message, if that's all right with y'all. So tonight, I'm going to start um, a new message called thankfulness. Somebody say thankfulness. Somebody say thankfulness. So when it comes to thankfulness, what is the one event that comes to mind that just happens to be right around the corner. What is it? What is it? How many guys love Thanksgiving? Right, right. I mean, Thanksgiving is full of food and traditions, man. What are what what are some of your guys' family traditions at Thanksgiving? You eat pig intestines. That's disgusting. Oh, they eat turkey. All right. Like, like who watches football? What? Right? Who takes at least like five naps? How many guys take more than five naps? We're praying for it. How many guys take a nap at all? Right? If you don't take a nap on Thanksgiving, you're in sin. That is like, that, that, that is like national nap day. I believe it, man. So like, obviously, thanks, Thanksgiving, right? We all look forward to just like picking out right, and eating as much food as we possibly can. So what are some of your guys' favorite foods for Thanksgiving? Turkey, ham. What is it? Ham. Devil, deviled eggs. What is it? Stuffing. How many guys like stuffing? Macaroni and cheese, yo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Who likes the macaroni and cheese? Woo! Y'all got way too hyped for mac and cheese. So, I'm going to lie to you guys, my favorite Thanksgiving meal, possibly one of my favorite meals of all time, is corn. Corn, man. Corn is like vegetable candy. All right, listen, and before you go making fun of corn, because people, man, corn has a bad rep for some reason. Listen, corn saved America. All right, I want you guys to realize that corn saved America twice. All right, twice. How? Um, When the pilgrims were starving, what did the Indian teach them how to plant? Was it turkeys? No, it was corn, Aurelis. Come on. Come on. During the Great Depression, I found out the other day, people survived off of corn. Get off my back. Corn saved America. So if you have nothing to be thankful for in this room tonight, at least you have corn. All right? When you're eating that corn on Thanksgiving, remember that corn, you're here because of that piece of corn. All right? Remember that. Remember that. Right, so every year we eat a ton of food. We might play some football with the family and then we sleep a lot. I mean, right, we eat t- turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce, apple pie, pumpkin pie, cornbread, collards, ham, whatever else you can think of, right? And then after that, like, we have to go and we have to switch pants because uh, our waist has gotten a little bit bigger. At least when you get older, that's what happens. You switch to your sweatpants. You got some stretching room, all right? But listen, as amazing as all that stuff is, um, this, this subject of thankfulness or of thanksgiving, of living a thankful life um, existed way before corn saved America. All right? Believe it or not, I mean, thankfulness or thanksgiving is a concept that originated with God. It originated with God, and it's found all over the Bible. I mean, I just have um, a few instances to show you guys, like in Psalms 107, verse 1. Woo! It says, oh, give thanks. Somebody say, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Psalms 30, verse 12, it says that I might sing praises to you and not be silent Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks 
forever. Somebody say, give thanks. See, it is evident, man, that through these verses that God has called thankfulness or thanksgiving to be a lifestyle and not just a holiday. Listen to me tonight, because a lot of us, we treat this subject of thankfulness and thanksgiving like it's a holiday. You know, a holiday happens once a year, but a lifestyle, it means continuous action. All right, God has called thanksgiving to be a continuous action in our lives. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Say, preach it, white boy. Come on, say, preach it, white boy. Actually, you got to say, preach it, half white boy. Thank you guys so much. Man, so over the past few weeks, we've been talking about how God has called us to create a kingdom culture in our lives, right? When we're ta talking about honor. And so I just got to thinking is that, man, when you get to heaven, imagine how much thankfulness is going to be in heaven. Like, like imagine, man, it's just going to be overflowing. I mean, the Bible says is that there's 24-7 worship going around the throne of God at all times. That's an act of thanksgiving. Right? Is heaven is full of thankfulness and thanksgiving, which means what is that our life should be full of thankfulness and thanksgiving, right? 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 right. So, Pastor Josh, yes, what does thanksgiving mean? I am so glad you asked. Wow. So the word thanksgiving in the New Testament, um, it means this, it means an outpouring. Somebody say an outpouring of wonderful feelings that freely flow from the heart in response to someone or something. An outpouring of wonderful feelings that freely flow from the heart in response to someone or something. The word thankfulness in English means this. First one was in Greek, this one is in English. It means to express warm and deep feelings of appreciation for kindness or benefits received. To express warm and deep feelings of appreciation for kindness and benefits received. Now from these two definitions, I think that there are two really important things that we need to grab about thankfulness in order for us to begin to walk in what true thankfulness really is. Does that sound good? Does that sound good? Y'all gotta talk to me. All right, so I'm gonna say number one. I'm gonna say number one. Is that true thankfulness is expressed. True thankfulness is expressed. You know, we look at those definitions in the first one, it says an outpouring that freely flows. The second one, it says an expression of feelings of appreciation. See, thankfulness was not meant to be something that stays hidden. It was not meant to be an emotion that you keep to yourself. You see, imagine tonight, all right, imagine that you leave church and you meet somebody that is completely destitute. I like your hair. That is completely destitute. All right? And, and so you said, man, you got nowhere to go. You got nothing to eat. So guess what? I'm going to let you come and I'm going to let you live with me. All right? And so you let them live with you, right? You let them eat your food. You let them eat your corn. God forbid. I mean, you are generous. All right, you are so kind enough, man, to go out and to buy them food. I mean, not food, but buy them new clothes, right? You say, man, you know, they need a cell phone. So you go out and you buy them a cell phone and you, and, and you pay their monthly bill, which is very expensive if you have Verizon. All right, and then you let them use your computer when they want to, and you even give them advice when they really, really need it is that you were at their beckoning call when they need you. You take care of most of all of their needs and most of their wants and imagine that this person never once says thank you. Imagine that you go out of your way and you do all this for that person, right? You do all of it like freely, freely. But imagine this person never says thank you. How many guys will be down for helping this person again? How many of you guys would have a problem with that? Right, right, right. Why, why is there an instinctive problem with that? Because there's something embedded in us that knows that thankfulness is meant to be expressed and not just kept inside. You, you know, and believe it or not, when we talk about that example, tonight I want you to think about your parents. I want you to think about your parents tonight who every night they feed you and, 
and and the clothes that you have on your back tonight are not because you've been working really hard but because they've been working really hard and that cell phone that you have in your pocket and, and, and the bill that gets paid every month is mostly not because of your hard work but it's because of their hard work that's a parent right right every year they go and they buy you new clothes when they don't have to right you have a roof over your head because of them when was the last time you said thank you that's right today's the right answer good job good job good job all right okay but moving beyond your parents what about God I thank God every day All right, so I'm going to say number two. So I'm going to say number two. Thankfulness is a heart attitude slash reaction. It is that true thankfulness, it originates in the heart. It is, I mean, how many of you guys have ever heard a fake thank you before? Right? Like you, like, like you hear somebody say thank you, but you just know that it's like the fakest thank you ever. And that like they don't mean it at all. They're like, thank you. You know? It's just like absolutely ridiculous. And you're like, dude, what is your problem? You, you know, maybe somebody goes out of their way to get someone something, but it's not exactly what they wanted. And so they say thank you out of an obligation. Or worse, they complain about what they got. Uh, see, like honor, thankfulness is expressed through actions, but it always comes from the heart. True thankfulness, it always originates in the heart. And we're going to talk about that more in a second. Man, but have you ever met somebody where they've been blessed, they've been given something, and like it is just so evident how thankful they are. It is, is that they cannot stop telling you thank you, man. Maybe there's tears in their eyes. And I'm like you can just tell, man, that you just made this person's day because you blessed them. Have you guys ever met somebody like that? How many guys treat your parents like that? I'm just kidding. You, you should. You should. But I'm just kidding. I don't treat my parents like that. I should. But, but, but what's the difference? Focus. Focus, guys. Eric, be a leader. Listen, guys. L -l -l Listen. All right, so what's the difference between the two people? All right, the, 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 the one person that gets something and they have, it's like, a, it's like a fake thank you and, oh, gosh, you know, I guess I'll figure out what to do with this ugly sweater, Grandma. You know what I mean? Then the person that's like, oh my God, Grandma, this is the greatest sweater in the world. Thank you so much. Yeah. Even though it's so ugly. <laughs> you know, it, it, is that, what is the difference between these two people? It's their heart. It's their heart. It's their heart attitude. See, listen to me. The truth is, is that you control the attitude of your heart. Listen to me tonight, is that you control the attitude of your heart. If you're taking notes, write that down. Is that you are the gatekeeper to your heart. You are. No one else is. Listen, I can't stand at your heart and be a gatekeeper for you. You know, the Bible says, it says, guards your heart with all diligence because it directs the course of your life. Or out of it flows all the issues of life. Is that you are the gatekeeper. Somebody say me. Somebody say I. I. Somebody say, me, I. See, listen, too many people blame their circumstances for their outcome. Hear me tonight. They say, man, well, the reason why I am the way I am is because this person did this to me. Man, and this circumstance happened, and, and, and that happened. And, and so, that's, so that's the reason why I am the way that I am. Listen, your circumstance did not create you. How you respond to your circumstances it, is what determines your outcome. Say that again. Is that how I respond to my circumstances determine my outcome? Listen, I'm sorry you've been through hell. Listen, I'm sorry situations in your life have royally stunk. But how are you going to respond? How are you going to respond? See, so we said that number one is true thankfulness is expressed. And thankfulness is a heart attitude. And then, but what is the opposite reaction um, of thankfulness? Is that the opposite reaction is, I believe, complaining 
or apathy. I mean, how many of you guys have met somebody who complains before? How many of you guys have been guilty of complaining before? Jesus. Right? Listen to this. The word complain, it means to show oneself sad. To show oneself sad. Is that, man, there's just something so annoying about a whiner who does not get their way. Right? Right, everybody who just walks around and they whine all the time because this didn't go right and because that didn't go right and because this person gets this and I don't get it. And they just whine, 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 whine and you're like, shut up. <laughs> you're annoying. You know, maybe they didn't get what they wanted. I mean, maybe life is tough and they have to let everybody know how much of a struggle they are going through. <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying? See, listen, a complainer shows their sadness or their dislike through their words, their body language, the tone of voice, through their actions. So, you know, I was watching a video. I was going to show you guys this video, but I never got money to link. Is that this dad brings his daughter out, right? It's her birthday. She brings his, his daughter out and she's blindfolded. And they, and they take off the blindfold and in front of her is like this brand new red sports car. Right, it's probably like $50,000 at the time, right? And this girl goes, oh my God, Dad, I wanted a blue sports car. Did you know, Dad, I said I wanted a blue sports car. How dare you buy me, take it back right now. Like real, real life reaction, right? It's just like the girl you just want to drop kick. You just want to drop kick her. Is that a complainer shows their sadness or their dislike through their words, their body language, their tone of voice, their actions for either the people in their life or for what they have received. You know, and the truth is, is that obviously that was an extreme situation with that girl with the car. But man, but we've all been guilty of this. You know, and we've all been guilty of complaining. Man, I know I have plenty of times. Is that maybe when things don't go my way or maybe when my parents don't give me exactly what I wanted. Oh, really, guys? Come on, mom. Dad, grandpa, grandma. So check out this really interesting Bible story about thankfulness found in Numbers chapter 11. It says, soon the people began to complain about their hardship. And the Lord heard everything they said. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them, and he sent a fire to rage among them. And he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. I should tell you right there that God does not like complaining. And the people screamed to Moses for help. And when he prayed to the Lord, the fire stopped. Verse 4. Then four and rabble who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to exclaim, oh, for some meat, they exclaimed. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. And we had all the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic we wanted. But now our appetites are gone. And all we ever see is this manna. Manna, manna, manna. Moses heard all the families standing in the doorways of their tents, whining, complaining, showing how sad they were about their tragic situation. And the Lord became extremely angry. And the Lord became extremely angry. I mean, the truth is, is that many Christians act just like Israel. They act just like Israel. It is that they carry more um, um, a, a spirit of complaining than the spirit of thanksgiving. Hear me tonight, please. Because a person who complains always sees what they don't have and overlooks what they do have. Hear me tonight, a person who complains always sees what they don't have and overlooks what they do have. That's good, y'all. That's, that's good preaching. Listen, listen. I'm amazed how Israel could remember the meat and the fish and the onions and the garlic, but they forgot about the whips that were on their back. That they, they all of a sudden, man, is that they forgot about the 400 years of slavery that, that they had been in. 
under the cruel hand of Egypt. And they forgot how the Pharaoh of Egypt killed all their firstborn babies. That is true. It's very true. We at the beginning of Exodus. Focus, guys, focus. Listen to me. Is that they began to see what they didn't have instead of what they did have. See, listen, I believe this. This is just me. That complaining is a form of greed. Complaining is a form of greed because I'm looking at what I don't have, right? And I'm saying, man, I want and I want and I got to have it. Oh, my gosh. Is that Israel began seeing what they didn't have, and it changed their perspective on the provision of God. Now, let's look at God's response in Numbers chapter 11, verse 18, to their complaining. He said, get ready for tomorrow. You're going to eat meat. You have been whining to God. We want meat. Give us meat. We had a better life in Egypt. God has heard your whining. and He's going to give you meat. You're going to be so sick of meat that you'll throw up at the mere mention of it. You know, I skipped... Um, over some portions of the scripture, but, but it said this, it says, you're not only going to eat meat for a day, two days, 10 days, 20 days. He said that you're going to have meat for months to, to the point where it's going to come out of your nostrils. And here's why, listen, you're going to be sick of meat that you'll throw up at the mere mention of it. And here's why, because you have rejected God who is right here among you, whining to his face. Because you have rejected God who is right here among you, whining to his face. See, listen, God hates complaining. I mean, God hates complaining. I mean, I, I believe that complaining is an atmosphere of hell. Because it's not found in heaven. It's an atmosphere of hell. And God hates complaining because when you complain, you are, you are not really just rejecting what God has done, but you're rejecting God himself. You're rejecting God himself. Listen, has, have you ever given anybody a gift before and they reject the gift, but you felt like they rejected you? You know what I mean? Is that you bless somebody, maybe it was like a Christmas gift or something, and they like, they like turn their nose about it at, at, at your gift. And, it's, you, and you feel rejected. You feel hurt. Ladies, focus. Listen, God feels the same way. I mean, when I look at my life and I start overlooking all the blessings of God, I mean, like even the simple stuff, I and mean, we have so much to be blessed for. It, it, is that everybody I see in here has two legs that you can walk on. Man, you have two hands that you can wave in the air. Is that, man, you have breath in your lungs. Is that you have a house to go home to tonight with, with, with heat in it so you don't have to freeze. We are so blessed, and, and it's so easy, man, to overlook what we have because we, we want the newest and the latest and the best and the greatest. And so we start complaining about how, man, I'm stuck with this dumb iPad 1 or iPad 2. This thing is so dumb. It's so slow. Blah, 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 blah. I was saying that earlier today. I wanted to throw it through a window. And it's like, man, God, like, thank you for an iPad that I do have. I could be preaching from a notebook. The struggle could be real, you know? So, guys, start looking at what you do have instead of what you don't have. See, First Thess First Thessalonians 5.18, it says this. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Somebody say, in everything. Somebody say, in everything. Guess what, man? That means in the really awesome good times, right, when it's easy to give thanks, man, when I get blessed, man, when everything's going right. Man, but that means too, man, when my life is seriously sucking. Man, when things are not going well, man, when, 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 when things are not going my way, it is the will of God for me to give thanks. It is the will of God for me to operate in thanksgiving and thankfulness. Why? I bet better not why, man, man, but how is that possible? How is that possible? Because in everything, in everything, at least I have Jesus. Listen to me, in everything, at least I have Jesus. 
Is that, man, is that if you're a born again believer in this place, you always have a reason to be grateful. You always have a reason to be grateful. It's just 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus came. Man, he stretched his arms wide and they were nailed to a cross to buy your redemption. I have a reason to be thankful. Man, I have a reason to worship. See, man, you guys want to know why I'm up here in worship and I'm Bob and I'm just, and I just go nuts in worship? Why, man? Because I think back to the cross. I think back to when Jesus, man, he was being beaten and he was being bruised and he was being mocked for me. Man, when I was the enemy, when I was the sinner, when I was the guilty, when he was innocent. But he said, Josh, I'm going to pay the price for you because I love you. He said, I have a reason to be grateful. I always do. Man, because even though life is sucking, man, and even though things are hard, man, Jesus still died for me. And you know what? If he did nothing else for me, that would be enough. That would be enough for me to worship for the rest of eternity. And you know, I just, I just can't wait for the day that, that when I get to heaven, man, and, and, and I begin to realize how much I was really saved from, I begin to realize that man, I was supposed to spend an eternity in hell. Is that I was supposed to burn forever and I was supposed to be in utter darkness and worms were supposed to be eating my flesh for an eternity. But Jesus stepped in and he paid the price and he saved me. He saved me. See, we say, oh yeah, man, I thank God every day, but do you worship? Don't tell me you thank God every day, but you can't worship. Because worship is the ultimate act of thanksgiving in my opinion see check out what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 he says I don't have a sense of needing anything personally I've learned by now to be quite content with, with, with whatever my circumstances I'm just as happy with little as with much and with much as with little I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whether I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Is that it? Is that the end? Yep. Awesome. So who, what was the recipe? It was Jesus. It was just, it's in the one who makes me who I am. So tonight... Maybe you don't fall in the category of being a whiner or a complainer. Maybe you fall in the category of being apathetic. Man, I know, man, I've been guilty of this at times. Is that being blessed and almost like shrugging my shoulders and going, yeah, thanks. You know, an apathetic person, they get, they get blessed and they receive kindness or a benefit or a gift and they just shrug their shoulders. Is that they aren't thankful because they think that they deserve what they just received. They hear me, is that they think that they deserve what they just received. Is that both of these reactions come from an attitude. Both the reactions of complaining and being apathetic come from, the, come from an attitude of entitlement. Somebody say entitlement. Somebody say entitlement. Entitlement means the feeling or belief that you deserve to be given something. The feeling or belief that you deserve to be given something. Tonight, I have a question for you. What do you believe that you deserve? Come on, what do you believe that you deserve? Man, is it a roof over your head? Is it a cooked dinner every night? Is it the cell phone that's in your pocket? Well, mom, dad, everyone else has one. Why can't I have one? Is it an Xbox One, a PS4? Is it the clothes in your closet? Is it the blood that Jesus sh shed for us on the cross? See, here's the truth. Here is the truth, is that the only thing we deserved is that the only thing that we've earned is hell. Hear me tonight, the only thing that we deserve and the only thing that we've earned is hell. And here, watch, I'll prove it to you. How many of you guys have ever lied before? How many of you guys have ever cheated before? Hey, let's get real. 
How many guys have ever stolen anything before? Right? How many of you guys are guilty of lust? Woo! Yo, can I stick like all limbs up in the air? How many of you guys have ever talked back to your parents? Yeah, me too. Me too. All right. But listen, so, so, so if you did any of those things, I want you to raise your hands in the air. Listen, according to Romans 6.23, you've done what the Bible calls sin. And just one act of sin means that you deserve hell. The Bible says that the wages of your sin is death, is eternal separation from God for, for, is for forever. It, 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 is that you bought yourself a one-way ticket to hell. That is the only thing that we've earned. That is the only thing that we deserve. Man, and we'll be a whole lot better when we get that through our heads. Is, is that we don't even deserve the breath that we breathe in our lungs. And here's, here's the amazing thing, is that in the midst of our sin, in the midst of doing what we did to earn that payment of death or hell, meant Jesus came in his grace. I meant Jesus came in his mercy, like I just said, and he paid the price for us, right? 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 right. right. That's something to get excited about, right? right? Is that I can do nothing in my own strength to earn a way into a relationship with God or to earn a child of God is that it's all a gift. Is that I have the ultimate reason to be thankful every day. And once again, that's Jesus. That's Jesus, y'all. That's Jesus. Now, in closing here, you know, I want you guys to think of thankfulness like a vaccine shot. Is that thankfulness is more than a command, but it's a vaccine shot. Is that what does a vaccine shot do? How many of you guys have ever been to another country before? Does anybody, how many of you guys know that before you go, you have to see the doctor and you have to get shots and your records have to be updated and all this fun stuff? Because when you travel is that that country has certain amoebas, made up word, I don't know. But, but it has certain viruses and diseases that aren't here in America that your body isn't used to. And so they give you shots to protect you when you go over there so you, so you don't get really sick or die from these diseases because you can die from them. All right, so listen, so God has called you to walk in thankfulness for your own protection. Hear me tonight, it is that thankfulness is like a spiritual shot that protects us from entitlement, from bitterness, from apathy, from anger, from conceit, from suspicion, from resentment, from unforgiveness, from pride, from competition. Listen, did you know it's impossible to feel entitled and still be thankful? It's impossible. Is that I can't feel like I deserve something and still be thankful for it at the same time. You know, it's impossible to be in competition with somebody when you're thankful for who they are. I mean, it's hard to be jealous over what someone else has when I'm so thankful for what God has already blessed me with. It's hard to be apathetic when you are thankful. I mean, it's hard to hold anger, bitterness, and resentments towards somebody when you are thankful for them. I mean, Hunter can make me mad, but man, if I'm so thankful that God has brought Hunter into my life, even though sometimes I just want to, do you know it's hard for me to stay angry at him? Right? So in closing, it's this, is that the essence of the heart of thankfulness and gratitude is an attitude that believes that you got something that you didn't deserve, that you received a benefit or a blessing that you shouldn't have. I'm going to read that one, one, one more time, is that the heart of thankfulness and gratitude is an attitude that believes that you got something that you didn't deserve, that you received a benefit or a blessing that you shouldn't have. Realize that, realize that. Night is that the only thing that I've earned, the only thing I deserve is hell. And the Bible says that every good, man, every good and perfect gift comes from above. It comes from God the Father. Guys, we have so much to be thankful for. We have so much to be thankful for, y'all. So with every head down and every eye closed, I want to do two things really, really quick. The first one is this, is that if you do not know Jesus, if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, man, I just talked about 
that how he came and he died for us is that he paid the penalty and the price for our sin so not that we could follow a bunch of rules and regulations but so that we could be in relationship with him if tonight if you're not in an intimate relationship with God tonight is your choice man tonight it's, it's, it's your chance it's your chance so if that's you and you say man Pastor Josh I want to get in this amazing relationship with God on a count of three I want you to raise your hands one two three is there anybody in here Anybody in here? 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Thank you, I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Thank you, I see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand. Is there anybody else? Come on, you say, tonight, I see your hand. Tonight, I want to start a relationship with God. It's not about rules, it's not about regulations, it's not about a list of do's and don'ts. But man, it's about loving Jesus and Him loving you back. All right, I want everyone to pray this prayer with me. I want you to say, God, thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. Jesus, I need your forgiveness. Wash me clean with your blood. I publicly declare and confess that you are the Son of God. You died for my sins and you rose again on the third day. So come and be the Lord and Savior of my life. I accept the free sacrifice that you paid for me. In Jesus' name, amen. And with every head down and every eye closed again, um, if tonight, if you say, man, Pastor Josh, I have not been walking in thankfulness. I have not been walking in the spirit of thanksgiving. Maybe it's for the people around you. Maybe it's for the situation. Is that maybe you fall underneath the category of being a complainer. Man, and we saw God's reactions to complainers. You know, or maybe you said, man, I've just been apathetic or, 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 or I feel entitled. And tonight you want that to break off of your life. You want to begin operating in a spirit of thankfulness, in a spirit of thanksgiving. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to raise your hands. One, two, three. Who is that? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Come on, raise them high, raise them high. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, if that's you and your hands up with every eye closed to I just want you to stand up. In fact, why, why, why doesn't everybody stand up? Because I believe it's way more people than, than that. And I want you to raise your hands. I want you to say, God, tonight, I repent for complaining. God, tonight, I repent for caring entitlement. I ask that you break that off of my life. God, thank you for Jesus. Come on, say that again. Say thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending your son to die for me. God, I will in everything give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Awesome stuff, guys. Thank you so much. Um, if you are a student leader, can you come and see me really quickly um, up front? Um, I have a quick announcement for you guys. Everybody else, thank you for coming. Next week, there's no service. What? Offering is going to be at the door. Um, we love you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you guys on the 30th.